Well, look what we have here, then. I think we've just been blessed. Uh-oh. Low gains, men. This can't be good. Didn't we spend all morning asking about an elf by this very description, and everyone said they hadn't seen one? It seems we were lied to. Gentlemen, surely there's no need for trouble. These are no doubt simply more poor souls seeking refuge. They're more than that. Now stay out of our way, sister. You protect these traitors, you'll get the same as them. Tern Logan claims the Grey Wardens betrayed the King. Or haven't you heard? Enough talk! Take the Warden into custody. Kill the sister and anyone else that gets in your way. Right. Let's make this quick. Most All right, excellent. you've won. We surrender. Good. They've learned their lesson and we can all stop fighting now. I was there. The turn pulled us out of a trap. The wardens led the king to his death. The turn could do nothing. W w what do you want to tell him? I'll tell him right away. Now, thank you. I apologize for interfering, but I couldn't just sit by and not help. Save my life. I assure you, I can handle myself. I wasn't born in the Chantry, you know. Many of us had more colorful lives before we joined. Let me introduce myself. I am Liliana. One of the lay sisters of the Chantry here in Lothring. Oh, I was. They said you were a Grey Warden. I'm surprised you're an elf. But elves must want the Blight defeated as much as humans, no? I know after what happened you will need all the help you can get. That's why I'm coming along. The Maker told me to join you. Surely, he will not do so without good reason. I... I know that sounds... Absolutely insane, but it's true. I had a dream, a vision. More crazy? I thought we were all full up. Look at the people here. They are lost in their despair, and this darkness, this chaos, will spread. The Maker doesn't want this. What you do, what you are meant to do, is the Maker's work. Let me help. Perhaps your skull was cracked worse than Mother thought. Thank you. I appreciate being given this chance. I will not let you down. Good day, Sister Liliana. I'm surprised to see you're still in Lothering. It is good to see you as well, Your Reverence. I do not recognize your companion. Greetings. Will you be making a donation to the Chantry? Our need has never been greater. Might I suggest 30 silver? Thank you, dear woman. What can I do for you, then? It might have been kinder to execute him, but I leave his fate to the Maker. Why does he interest you? Then his next victims might count you and me as their murderers. And what do you say on this, Liliana? You know your friend better than I. These are unusual times, Your Reverence. With us, the Kunari might do some good. I am sure of it, in fact. Were things not so desperate? Very well, I trust you. Take these keys to his cage and make her watch over you. Thank you, Your Reverence. Your trust is not misplaced. Yes? Well, here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain. But I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do, but that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw, but there it was, 
a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. In my dream I fell, or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. Yes? Well, here I am. Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. Yes? Well, here I am. What is meant by someone like me? And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering Cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, they were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? My fruit? I... I... I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <clears throat> but no, I did not take vows. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. I was a traveling minstrel in Orle. Tales and songs were my life. I performed and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Yes? Well, here I am. Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinda Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Of course, Olesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Ole. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield the sword as well as any man could kill a deer with an arrow at a hundred paces and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor 
and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney, but Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slid her throat. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Olay so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. I know one, talked to me by my mother a long time ago, it always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Ah, uh, are you sure? Was she THE Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devour of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon touched, who dwells in the mists. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of High Ever, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the chasing tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyeva, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar, but a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle run red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chasing men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. Which one? Andraste was the maker's chosen. The maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace, and wisdom enraptured him 
and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the Maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea that the Maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. Alas, it was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Mafrath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the Maker's betrothed, and Mafrath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Mafarath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinta, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathus, the capital of Tevinta. I have thought on this too. Did he withdraw his side from her at that moment? Where were all the powers he bestowed upon her? This question has come to me many times, and I have no answer. Perhaps there was no way for Andraste to return to the Maker but through her death. We will never know for sure. I have heard a little about how the Elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the Elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great Elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the Elves were free. Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed, but the Elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The Elves claimed the Dales in the south and settled there in a land of their own. The Elves lived in the Dales for centuries. They resurrected the worship of the Elven gods and would allow the building of no Chantry. This angered the Chantry, and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The Chantry says the Elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The Chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the Elves, named for Andraste's similar march against the Vinter. During the exalted march of the Dales, the Elven cities were sacked, and the Elven state completely dissolved. Some of the Elves bitterly accepted their fates and surrendered to human rule, living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, refused to bow to the humans and instead became homeless wanderers. There were the Elves of the Dales, the Dalish. Did you always live in an alienage? Was it very terrible? That is good to hear. I have never been to the Denerim alienage, but I hear that life is hard and there is so much squalor. In Orlais, most Alvin servants live in the homes of their masters, often in great wealth and luxury. Yes, but some humans are treated cruelly too. It is not just elves. A well-trained Alvin servant is highly valued in Orlais. They are nimble and dexterous, and many people find them pleasing to look at. No, I did not mean it that way. Oh, my words were clumsily chosen. I did not mean to offend. I... I am sorry. Of course, I am sorry if I implied otherwise. Thank you, you have given me a lot to think about. I... Have I ever told you I really like the way you wear your hair? It's very nice and it suits you. Simple. Not like the elaborate hairstyles we wore in Orlais. They involved flowers, ribbons, jewels. One year, feathers were all the rage and Lady Elise decided she needed to outdo everyone else and actually wore live songbirds in her voluminous hair. The chirping was quite charming for a while, but you must realize terrified little birdies often have loose bowels. Yes, you can imagine what she looked like by the end of the evening. But I was trying to say something nice to you, wasn't I? 
Oh, forgive me. My mind wanders so. It's just that I... I feel so comfortable talking to you. Like I could say anything and you wouldn't judge me. You see? This is what I mean. You're such a pleasure to talk to. I haven't felt this close to anyone in a long time. I really enjoy your company. And what would you do if I said I do? Very much so, in fact. Huh? You must do that then. Perhaps later when I'm not prepared for it. Surprise me. Come then. Let's get going. If I recall correctly, you have some important earth-shattering business to attend to. I enjoy the nights at camp. The night always seems more peaceful to me. Safer. I feel the night grants us a reprieve from the troubles of the day. Silly, isn't it? The darkspawn never sleep, and they lurk in the shadows. I enjoy those nights when we stand guard together, talking to pass the time in those small hours. Well, I talk and you listen, mostly. Sometimes, I succumb and fall asleep and wake to find you still watchful, and I know you're watching out for me. What I'm trying to say is, is that I trust you. I'm comfortable around you. I know you'll be there when I need you. You are our, our leader and my friend, and sometimes I think that m maybe we could be more than that. Maker, look at me stumbling over my words like an ill-educated peasant girl. Some bard I am. I'm not embarrassed. I'm just flushed because of the heat. Really? N no one told me. You, you felt the same way and didn't do me the courtesy of informing me? You made me say all these things. Why couldn't you have said them first? Oh, you... Oh, how very awkward. <clears throat> well, yes, but, but d don't question me. I am a woman and I reserve the right to be inconsistent. Oh, why am I being such a baby about this? I must be a sight spilling my guts. The stars are out. It comforts me to know that the stars will remain untouched by the blight. That whatever happens down here, they will shine eternally. Their light undimmed. There is a story about that cluster of stars over there. Do you know it? Elindra and her soldier? A long time ago, there lived a fair maiden called Elindra. She had many suitors but spurned them all for she did not love them. One day, Elindra was sitting by her window in her father's castle, singing and dreaming, when her lovely voice caught the attention of a young soldier. Entranced by her song, the soldier drew near to Elindra's window. As their eyes met, he fell in love with her and she with him. When Elindra told her father about the man she had chosen, he was furious, for Elindra was high-born, but her love nothing more than a common soldier. To keep them apart, he had Elindra imprisoned in the highest tower of his castle and sent her soldier to the wars. Alas, not a month had passed before news of the soldier's death reached Elindra. Alone in her tower, Elindra wept for her love and beseeched the gods to deliver her from this cruel world. So earnest was her plea that the gods themselves were moved. They gathered Elindra into their arms and lifted her high into the heavens where she became a star. The gods also raised up the soul of Elindra's soldier love, and there he dwells, across the horizon from her. The band of stars between them is a river of Elindra's tears, cried for her lost love. They say that when Elindra has cried enough, she will be able to cross the river to be reunited with her soldier. This story is one of my favorites, a tale of a love so great and so enduring that it defies death and moves the gods to action. Sometimes I ask myself, does such a love exist? Can it exist? I never expected you to say that. It is a pleasant surprise. I have to say there is a certain severity to you. Finding a person behind that all is nice. Maybe you should let your softer side show more often. Sometimes, following your heart, not your head, leads you to remarkable places.
Oh, thank the Maker. We need help. They attacked the wagon. Please help us. Follow me. I'll take you to them. Took a bad shot in that fight. Mm. Oh, what? I. Oh. Oh. I rather thought I would wake up dead, or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. Of that, I have no doubt. You are most skilled. If you haven't killed me, however, you must have kept me alive for some purpose, yes? Ah, so I am to be interrogated. Let me save you some time. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. I have no idea what his issues are with you. The usual, I imagine. You threaten his power, yes? Beyond that, no, I am not loyal to him. I was contracted to perform a service. Oh, well, that's between Loghain and the Crows, and between the Crows and myself. Isn't that what we're establishing now? I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the Crows would have informed your Loghain of the results, if he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead, or I should be, at least, as far as the Crows are concerned. No need to see Loghain, then. What can I say, huh? I am an eternal optimist. Although the chances of succeeding at this point seem a bit slim, don't they? <laughs> no. no, I don't suppose you'd find that funny, would you? I can tell you that. They are an order of assassins out of Antiva, very powerful and renowned for always getting the job done, so to speak. Someone went to great expense to hire this man. Quite right. I'm surprised you haven't heard much of the crows out here. Back where I come from, we're rather infamous. Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. <laughs> Why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Loyalty is an interesting concept. If you wish, and you're done interrogating me, we can discuss it further. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause, so let me serve you instead. To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the Crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. Possibly. I happen to know their wily ways, however. I can protect myself as well as you. Uh, not that you seem to need much help. And if not, well, it's not as if I had many alternatives to start with, is it? I happen to be a very loyal person. Up until the point where someone expects me to die for failing. That's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you're the sort who would do the same thing. In which case I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. I think you're royally tough to kill, and utterly gorgeous. And not that I think you'll respond to simple flattery, but there are worse things in life than serving the whims of a deadly sex goddess. Well, let's see. Being allowed to live would be nice, and would make me marginally more useful to you. And somewhere down the line, if you should decide that you no longer have need of me, then I go on my way. Until then, I am yours. Is that fair? Why? Because I am skilled at many things, from fighting to stealth and picking locks. 
I could also warn you should the Antivan Crows attempt something more sophisticated now that my attempts have failed. I could also stand around and look pretty if you prefer. Warm your bed. Fend off unwanted suitors, no? These things you say, they must drive the men back home simply wild. So what shall it be? I'll even shine armor. You won't find a better deal, I promise. What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? Hmm. All right. All right. I see your point. Still, if there was a sign we were desperate, I think it just knocked on the door and said hello. A fine plan. But I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. Welcome, Zivran. Having an Antivan crow join us sounds like a fine plan. Oh, you are another companion to be, then? I wasn't aware such loveliness existed amongst adventurers, surely. Or maybe not. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. I thought I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? So you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. Apparently everyone seems to agree that a blight is the perfect time to start killing each other. Marvelous, really. We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. Hold on, what is this evil that's attacking you? I, 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 I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, our Lehman's brother, he's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. It's Thomas, yes? And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainosphere, brother to the R. I remember you, Ban Tegan, though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news! Still alive, yes. Though not for long if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. What, that he pulled his men in order to save them? That Caelan risked everything in the name of glory? <laughs> hardly. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the King. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. So you are a Grey Warden as well. A pleasure to meet you. I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses, returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come, with greater numbers. With Caelan dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. How pointless to help these villagers fight an impossible battle. One would think we had enough to contend with elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. 
Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. Of course. Sir Perth insists. He wants me to be with the villagers, so everyone he needs to protect is in one place. I don't mind, to be honest. The point of all this is to protect the villagers, and I can do that best here. This is the last line of defense, should things go amiss. We could bring some men in to stand beside me, but I'd rather keep the monsters away from the villagers if possible. I do not know. They seem to be walking corpses, men with rotting flesh that continue to attack even with the gravest injuries. Undead spirits possessing the dead. There could be several causes behind such a thing, none of them pleasant. Hopefully we can find the source and stop it before it causes any more damage. With luck, we'll also find Eamon and be able to help him. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. Silence, girl. Sorry. You Am I bothering you? Hear you? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. Those... those things dragged my mother away. I don't know what happened to her, but I hear her screaming all the time. Everywhere. How terrible. You poor thing. I wish there was something we could do to help. And now my brother Bevan, he, he ran off. I, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared they got him too. He said something about saving mother. He's just a little boy. He doesn't understand she's gone. If he has foolishly run off, then he is no doubt dead. You should get used to that fact. Nice. Maybe you want to kick her in the head while you're at it. Shall we comfort her with lies? If she is to face death, better she face it honestly. I hope he didn't try to go to the castle. Oh, that would be awful. I went to her house. It's by the square. He wasn't there. I searched the rest of the village, too. I called and I called, but he never answered. I, I wonder if he ran off into the woods. I'm so worried. Without me, he has nobody. I understand, I do. I'm just so afraid for him. Hello? Who's there? Is there anyone alive out there? Wait, you don't look like the Arlesa's guards. Are you from outside the castle? You've spoken to her? Then you know what I did. I'm not proud of my deed. Poisoning Arl Eamon was what I was hired to do. Lady Isold had no idea when she took me in to tutor her son, of course. I... I know it looks suspicious, but I'm not responsible for the creatures and the killings in the castle. I was already imprisoned when all that began. At first, Lady Isold came here with her men, demanding that I reverse what I'd done. I thought she meant my poisoning of the Arl. That's the first I heard about the walking corpses. She thought I'd summoned a demon to torment her family and destroy Redcliffe. She had me tortured. There was nothing I could do or say that would appease her. So they left me to rot. I was instructed to by Terran Loghain. I was told that Arl Eamon was a threat to Ferelden, that if I dealt with him, Loghain would settle matters with the Circle. You see, I'm a Malifica, a blood mage. You, a blood mage? Truly? I would never have guessed. A blood mage? Well, that isn't good. I dabbled in the Forbidden Arts, and they condemned me to death for it. I thought Loghain was giving me a chance to redeem myself. But he's abandoned me here, hasn't he? Everything's fallen apart and I'm responsible. I have to make it right somehow. I have to. Connor had started to show signs. Lady Isold was terrified the circle of Magi would take him away for training. Connor? A mage? I can't believe it. She sought an apostate, a mage outside the circle, to teach her son in secret so he could learn to hide his talent. Her husband had no idea because he would be taken away forever. A mage cannot inherit a title, even the son of a powerful Arl. She's also a pious woman. Her son having magic was humiliating. No, she was adamant that he never find out. She said that he'd do the right thing, even if it meant losing their son, and that infuriated her. Son, but he's still very young. He can barely cast a minor spell, never mind something more powerful. 
at least not intentionally. I have thought about it, and it's possible Connor could have inadvertently done something to tear open the veil. With the veil to the Fade torn, spirits and demons could infiltrate the castle. Powerful ones could kill and create those walking corpses. I never meant for it to end like this. I swear. Let me help you fix this. I say this boy could still be of use to us, but if not, then let him go. Why keep him prisoner here? Hey, hey, let's not forget he's a blood mage. You can't just set a blood mage free. Better to slay him. Better to punish him for his choices. Is this Alistair who speaks or the Templar? I'd say it's common sense. We don't even know the whole story yet. He wishes to redeem himself. Doesn't everyone deserve that chance? Like yourself, you mean? Everyone deserves a chance to redeem themselves in the Maker's eyes. This man, no less than any. I don't know. He is a blood mage. But this is an unusual situation. Give me a chance, please. You're letting me out? And what then? Are you truly suggesting just letting him go? A dangerous blood mage? I... I guess not. Then... then I'll go. If you can help anyone here. Tell them I never meant for it to end like this. So these are our visitors. The ones you told me about, Mother. Y yes Connor. And this is the one who defeated my soldiers. The ones I sent to reclaim my village. Yes. And what now it's staring at me. Understand. I don't know how much... What is it, Mother? But she's always... I can't see it well enough. This is an elf, Connor. You... You've seen elves before. We have them here in the castle. Oh, I remember. I had their ears cut off and fed to the dogs. The dogs chew for hours. <laughs> Shall I send it to the kennels, Mother? Connor, I beg you. Don't hurt anyone. Ma Mother? What? What's happening? Where am I? Oh, thank the Maker. Connor. Connor, can you hear me? Get away from me, fool woman! You are beginning to bore me! Grey Warden, please don't hurt my son. He is not responsible for what he does. Connor didn't mean to do this. It was that mage, the one who poisoned Demon. He started all this. He summoned this demon. Connor was just trying to help his father. And made a deal with the demon to do so? Foolish child. It was a fair deal. Father is alive. Just as I wanted. Now it's my turn to sit on the throne and send out armies to conquer the world. Nobody tells me what to do anymore. Nobody tells him what to do. Nobody. Ha 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 ha. Quiet, uncle. I warned you what would happen if you kept shouting, didn't I? Yes, I did. But let's keep things civil. This woman will have the audience she seeks. Tell us, woman, what have you come here for? I'm not finished playing. You can't make me stop. I think it's trying to spoil my fun, mother. I... I don't think... Of course you don't. Ever since you sent the knights away, you do nothing but deprive me of my fun. Frankly, it's getting dull. I crave excitement and action. This woman spoiled my sport by saving that stupid village. And now she'll repay me. Tegan. Oh, Tegan. Are you all right? I am... Um... Better now, I think. <laughs> my mind is my own again. Blessed Andraste. 
I would never have forgiven myself had you died. Not after I brought you here. What a fool I am. Please. Connor's not responsible for this. There must be some way we can save him. I... Yes. I didn't tell you because I believed we could help him. I still do. Clearly the child is an abomination. There is... Only one way to stop it. He's not always the demon you saw. Connor is still inside him, and sometimes he breaks through. Please, I just want to protect him. Isn't that what started this? You hired the mage to teach Connor in secret, to protect him. If they discovered Connor had magic, then they'd take him away. I thought if he learned just enough to hide it, then... I think he ran upstairs, to the family quarters. Violence scares him. I know that sounds strange. He may have run up to his room, or... I don't know. The fighting may have scared Connor into... coming out again, and so he ran. So you're saying he may be vulnerable? I... perhaps. Is there... Is there no other way? I wouldn't normally suggest slaying a child, but he's an abomination. I'm not sure there's any choice. We can't kill a young boy, demon or no demon. Please don't say we're considering that. Connor is my nephew, but he is also possessed by a demon. Death would be merciful. No? What? What about the mage? We, he could know something of this demon. If he still lives, we could speak to him. Gone? What do you mean, gone? Is he dead? Can we do nothing else? Killing the child is the quickest course, but to say there is nothing else possible would be a lie. We can confront the demon in the Fade, though... Not easily. What do you mean? The demon is within Connor, is it not? No. It lies in the Fade and controls the boy from there. We can follow that connection, however, and do battle with its true form. So you can enter the Fade and kill the demon without hurting my boy? Possible to? Yes. Able to? Perhaps not. Entering the Fade requires Lyrium as well as numerous mages to perform the ritual. Neither of which we have. I understand. Can we do nothing else? You can find Lyrium and more mages at the Circle of Magi, if they would even do it. That is an excellent point. One of the treaties is also for the Circle of Magi, after all. The tower is about a day's journey across the lake. You could attempt to get the mage's help. But what will happen here? Connor will not remain passive forever. Go to the tower quickly, then. The longer you are away, the greater the chances of disaster. Blessed art thou who exist in the sight of the Maker. Blessed art thou who seeks his forgiveness. Blessed... what? Who are you? I beg you, do not disturb the girl's meditations. Revere Mother, I do not know this person. I'm sorry, but I... I don't know what you're talking about. Please do not vex her. She needs quiet and solitude to calm her mind and heal her heart. We have given her succor when she was lost. We showed her the way, and now she is one of us. I am happy here. This is all I ever wanted. I remember. There was a sign. Leliana, we have discussed this sign of yours. The Maker does not care to interfere in the affairs of mortals. This vision was likely the work of demons. The Maker cares for us. I believe he misses his wayward children as much as we miss him. My vision may not be from him, but it guides me to do what is right. My revered mother knew this. I don't know who you are, but you are not her. Let us leave. 
My head has not yet cleared, but there is something familiar about you, and I believe I trust you. This is your home, your refuge. Do you truly wish to leave the comfort of this place behind? Stay and know peace. There is no need. I carry the peace of the Chantry in my heart. You are going nowhere, girl. I will not permit it. No, she is ours. Now and forever. Holy Maker! She... she was a... Oh, my head feels heavy. Like I've just woken up from a terrible nightmare. I believe we had some task to accomplish. Let us be on our way. Wait, what's happening to me? What do we have here? A rebellious minion? An escaped slave? <laughs> my, my, but you do have some gall. But playtime is over. You all have to go back now. Oh, here I am. And there you are. You just disappeared. Well, no matter. You tried to keep us apart. You led us from each other because you fear us, don't you? You will not hold us, demon. We found each other in this place, and you cannot stand against us. If you go back quietly, I'll do better this time. I'll make you much happier. Can't you think about someone other than yourself? I'm hurt. So very, very hurt. You wish to battle me? So be it. You will learn to bow to your betters, mortal. sacred ashes. I have waited years for this. No one can take the ashes. They belong here. It has been my duty, my life, to protect the urn and prepare the way for the faithful who come to revere Andraste. For years beyond counting have I been here, and shall I remain? Until my task is done, and the Imperium has crumbled into the sea. I do not know, and I do not question. Colgrim knows not of what he speaks. His heart is laced with poison, and he has led many astray. You already know that the urn contains the remains of the Prophet Andraste. What else is there to tell? When my brethren and I carried Andraste from Tevinter to this sanctuary, we vowed to forever revere her memory and guard her. I have watched generations of my brethren take up the mantle of their fathers. For centuries they did this, unwavering, joyful in their appointed task. But now they have lost their way. They have forgotten Andraste and their promise. I am all that remains of the first disciples. I swore I would protect the urn as long as I lived. And I have lived a very long time. Did anyone really know her save the Maker? She would sometimes spend weeks alone in meditation often without food or water. I made a vow to Andraste and to the Maker. My life is tied to the ashes. As long as they remain, so will I. 
You have come to honor Andraste, and you shall, if you prove yourself worthy. Then you will not come to the ashes. It is not my place to decide your worthiness. The gauntlet does that. If you are found worthy, you will see the urn and be allowed to take a small pinch of the ashes for yourself. If not, the gauntlet tells the true pilgrims from the false. You will undergo four tests of faith, and we shall see how your soul fares. You will understand what it is when you face it. Before you go, there is something I must ask. I see that the path that led you here was not easy. There is suffering in your past. Your suffering, and the suffering of others. By the time you reached Chiani, she was broken, brutalized. You were too late. Tell me, Pilgrim. Did you fail, Shiani? Thank you. That is all I wish to know. You are too hard on yourself. No one's perfect. Accept your failings, but do not let them govern your life. You could not have known what would happen. You did what you thought was best. And what of those that follow you? Alistair, Knight, and Warden. You wonder if things would have been different if you were with Duncan on the battlefield. You could have shielded him from the killing blow. You wonder, don't you, if you should have died and not him. I... yes. If Duncan had been saved and not me, everything would be better. If I just had the chance, maybe I... Ask your question, Guardian. I am ready. You are ever the advisor, ready with a word of wisdom. Do you wonder if you spout only platitudes, burned into your mind in the distant past? Perhaps you are only a tool, used to spread the word of the Circle and the Chantry. Does doubt ever chip away at your truths? You frame the statement in the form of a question. Yet you already know our answers. There is no sense in hiding, is there? Yes, I do doubt at times. Only the fool is completely certain of himself. And you, why do you say the Maker speaks to you when all know that the Maker has left? He spoke only to Andraste. Do you believe yourself her equal? I never said that. I... In Orle, you were someone. In Lothering, you feared you would lose yourself, become a drab sister, and disappear. When your brothers and sisters of the Cloister criticized you for what you professed, you were hurt, but you also reveled in it. It made you special. You enjoyed the attention, even if it was negative. You're saying that I made it up for... for the attention? I did not. I know what I believe. The way is open. Good luck, and may you find what you seek. Hey. Who else? It's good to see you, I suppose. Life out there has been good to you, hasn't it? You're respected even among humans. Do you remember us? Where you came from, and what some of us still face every day? Really? Thank you, but that will take time. More time than you can spare. What happened? It wasn't really your fault. You were caught in the situation just like the rest of us. You have a great task to complete. I want you to take this. I think you should have it. Seeing you now gives me hope. For all of us.
never dreamed I would ever lay my eyes on the urn of sacred ashes. I... Oh, I, I, I have no words to express. I didn't think anyone could succeed in finding Andraste's final resting place. But here's, here she is. I could not have asked for a greater honor than to be here. I will never forget this feeling. You've seen and touched Andraste's ashes. They are the holiest thing on this earth, the remains of the Maker's Chosen. I know, it seems almost irreverent to use her as a curative, and it is also a tiny bit morbid. I do not know if I am worthy to look upon her. Yes, of course, but it still is something to be in awe of. I'm here for you. Of course. Mm, I have not given this a lot of thought. What will I do? We've traveled far and wide. Does it need to end? There's so much out there. Adventures to be had and stories to be told. I want to be part of it all. I might need some company. And you're not too irritating. You're welcome to come along if you like. It is settled then. You and I wandering the world, seeking our fortunes. I can't wait. I'm here for you. Of course. Wait, you want to talk uh, about us? Is there something bothering you? Really? You think so? You're so sweet. You're quite taken with each other, aren't you? I've noticed your blossoming relationship, and I wanted to ask you where you thought it was going. Leliana is a remarkable girl, sincere and guileless, and she has opened her heart to you. I would not like to see her hurt. Not intentionally, no. But there is great potential for tragedy here, for one or both of you. You are a Grey Warden. You have responsibilities which supersede your personal desires. Love is ultimately selfish. It demands that one be devoted to a single person who may fully occupy one's mind and heart to the exclusion of all else. A Grey Warden cannot afford to be selfish. You may be forced to make a choice between saving your love and saving everyone else. And then what would you do? You may have to, to save one or both of you unnecessary anguish later on. I know more about love's enchantment and its perils than I care to tell. But perhaps this is one lesson that cannot be taught. I have given my advice. Do with it what you will.
heard much about the halls of the Dwarven Kings, but the stories do it no justice. It is so strange, harsh, yet beautiful. And have you seen those tiny pig-like burrowing animals? They are adorable. I wish I could have one as a pet. But they must be hard to catch and... Oh, just ignore me. I'm so silly sometimes. Let's just go. Your clothes are so fancy. Did you get them topside? My ma'am used to say they don't got no stone to protect them topside. If I go up there, I'm a gonna fall into the sky. Yes. <laughs> when my doll left, he never came back. Who's to say he didn't fall up, eh? Nugs? Yes. They don't got much meat on them, but down here you can't be picky. Better than nothing. Nuggets. Lots of people sell them here in Dust Town. What for? You going to cook them up yourself? Yeah, I can find a nug for you. Could even get one from outside the city. Those ones in the deeps don't eat as much garbage. I don't know what they eat, but they always seem healthier, you know? Shiny coats, bright eyes. How much you giving me? Don't know. Depends on how big a one I catch. Give me some time. I'll hunt him down for you. I got him. He's all squirmy, but he's a big fella. Don't know. I'll take anything you can give. He's a fat one, though. Worth a bit. I knew you'd be good on your word. Nice doing business. Oh, it's one of those subterranean bunny pigs. Oh, look at him. Come here, you. He's probably just hungry. Oh, he's snuffling me. Snuffle, snuffle. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've made my day. Looking for little old me? Yes? What's on your mind? Where did you hear this? Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers. But some of them are... are what we call bards. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Nobles, mostly. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite. And in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. I have revealed too much, it seems. But it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. I... found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the Maker brought me here. 
I lied to you, you know, about why I left Orle. I didn't feel like talking about it then, what happened to me. Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. I was framed, betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a highborn lady, to blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description, and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body, sealed documents. My curiosity got the better of me. Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orle to other countries, Nevara and Antiva among others. It was treason. Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated within Orle. This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life as Bard taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries, it takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing up till the moment they showed me the documents, altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. The Orlesian guards, they captured me, did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured, and at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. It's a fine Stop. Thing we've done. Don't kill him. He is no common bandit. None of them were. Their weapons and armor are of fine make, and they are well trained. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Who are you? <coughs> Someone who regrets taking you on. I was told it would be an easy job. Kill the little red-haired girl. Deal with the others as we pleased. Kill the... You came to kill me? I don't pay to ask why someone wants someone else dead. I just need to know what to do and where to get my money. Ha! Money. I'll be lucky to get away with my life, it seems. Maybe we could work something out. You like the idea? Speak quickly. I've no real quarrel with you. It wasn't me that wanted you dead. But I know how you can find the one who does. I have some directions written down on how to get to the house. It's in Denrim. Yeah, it's the best I can do. 
Thank you. Now leave. I never want to see you again. Don't worry. I'll not trouble you no more. It's Marjolaine. It has to be. Maybe someone saw me. Maybe she's finally found me and wants to finish what she started. She needs to answer for what she's done to me. If we are ever in Denrim, I would like to seek her out. Perhaps it's time to settle this score for good. Look there! Lila. A cunning trap! Oh, so lovely to see you again, my dear. Spare me the pleasantries. I know you're... Oh, you must excuse the shabby accommodations. I try to be a good host, but you see what I have to work with. This country smells like wet dog everywhere. I cannot get the smell out. Even now it is in my hair, my clothes. Ugh. Of course, you don't notice it. You wallow in the muck with your bees so much, you are used to their scent. I am not here to discuss Feraldin's odor, Marjolaine. You framed me, had me caught and tortured. I thought that in Ferelden I would be free of you, but it seems I am not. What happened to make you hate me so? Why do you want me dead so badly? Dead? Nonsense. I know you, my Liliana. I know what you are capable of. Four or five men you can dispatch easily. They were sent to give you cause to come to me. And see, here you are. Ignore what she says. She's lying. I know how she works. What are you up to, Marjolaine? Why are you in Ferelden? In truth, you have knowledge that you can use against me. For my own safety, I cannot let you be. It is you think I did not know where you were? Did you think I would not watch, my Liliana? What is she up to, I thought? The quiet life, the peasant clothes, hair ragged and messy like a boy. Uh, this is not her. You were planning something, I told myself, so I watched. But no letters were sent, no messages, you barely spoke to anyone. Clever, Liliana, very clever. You almost had me fooled. But then, you left the Chantry so suddenly. What conclusion should I draw? You tell me. You think I left because of you? You think I still have some plan for... for revenge? You are insane, paranoid. Oh, is that what you think? If I were you, I would believe nothing, she says. Not a one. She will use you. You look at her and you see a simple girl, a friend, trusting and warm. It is an act. I am not you, Marjolaine. I left because I didn't want to become you. Oh, but you are me. You cannot escape it. No one will understand you the way I do, because we are one and the same. Do you know why you were a master manipulator, Liliana? It is because you enjoyed the game. You reveled in the power it gave you. You cannot change or deny this. Thank you. You will not threaten me or my friends again, Marjolaine. I want you out of my life forever. Leave Feralden. Go back to Orle and never return. What you do is no longer my concern. I see. I will go, for now. But you carry a dangerous secret of my Liliana. It is not over. Not for us. Oh, hello. Is there something you wanted to talk about? It's... it's nothing. I'm fine. I'm just thinking. I can't get what happened out of my head. I'd been in Lothering for years, and she still thought I was plotting against her. She didn't trust me. Maybe she never did. She loved me when she could use me and control me. And now that she can't, she wants me dead. It... It hurts to realize that I never really knew her. You are already helping so much by listening to me. I knew she was ruthless, but I didn't know how far she could go. 
She is self-serving, cruel. She uses people, then discards them. But that's how she survives in the life she leads. What? Well, what if she's right? What if we're the same? I... I should just have stayed in the Chantry. You don't understand. I forgot my life as a bard while I was in the cloister. I felt safe. I didn't have to watch my back all the time. That's what made Marjolaine the person she is, don't you see? It ruined her. It will ruin me too. Even now, I feel some regret at not ending her life in order to protect my own. What we're doing. What we've done. Hunted men down. Killed them. Part of me loves it. It invigorates me, and this scares me. I... I feel myself slipping. How can you be so sure? Do you really think so? Hearing you say that gives me comfort. I would like to be alone for now. I have many things to consider. Thank you for listening to me. Do you remember our discussion? I just wanted to tell you that I thought about what you told me, and you were right. Despite what Marjolaine says, I am not like her. I know that now. I have found peace in knowing the Maker, and nothing will change that. I followed you to make the world a better place, and as long as I keep that in mind, I will not fall. Sometimes, it takes another to show us the truths we hide from ourselves. Maybe. You'll just have to wait and see, won't you? It has been some time since I left Lothering. When I stepped out of the cloister, I had no idea where my path would lead. I walked where the Maker led me, and... He has rewarded me for my faith. I found you. You don't know how it makes me feel to hear you say that. But now it's getting late. I think I might turn in early. I can't help thinking about how soft and warm my bedroll is. You're welcome to join me, of course. The Maker says we must share our blessings. Good. Now come with me before I lose my patience. I've been up for some time, but yes, I slept very well. I've just been watching you sleep. Did you know your eyelids flutter when you dream? And you have such pretty eyelashes. Mm-hmm. They're like little butterflies. I want to catch them and keep them in a jar. Maybe. I'm so happy, blissful. I haven't slept so well since I was forced to flee from Orlais. Knowing you will be the first thing I see when I wake gives me no small amount of comfort. I feel safe in your arms. Safe, loved and accepted. This is where I belong. Thank you. I suppose I should get up. We have a long day ahead of us. 
Come on, Darkspawn await with bated breath for you to put them out of their misery. What are you... Oh, I see. Hmm. I suppose the Darkspawn will just have to wait a bit longer. What's on your mind? I have watched you for a time, and perhaps I was wrong. There seems to be something special between the two of you. I think she feels she's truly found her place with you. That after all her wanderings, she's finally home. I think I was too harsh in my judgment before, and I am sorry. What you have may not last forever. Death and duty may part you, but love's worthiness is not diminished because of that. I should have seen this before. Instead, you learn to cherish every precious moment that you spend together, knowing that it may be the last. And for those of us watching, well, it brings warmth to these old bones to know that something so beautiful can be found in the midst of chaos and strife. Well, aren't you sweet and attentive? I was just thinking about what happened to the elves, and I am reminded of a song sung to me many years ago. It was when my mother died, and this wise elven woman comforted me and told me that we shouldn't fear death or hate it. Death is just another beginning. One day, we must all shed our earthly bodies to allow our spirits to fly free. It's a beautiful sentiment, I think. One that brings peace and hope to the grieving.
Well, aren't you sweet and attentive? Well, aren't you sweet and attentive? Well, aren't you sweet and attentive? Of course. Yes, a little better. Time heals all wounds, so they say. Scars remain, but they are just colors in the painting that is my life, no? I wish things had happened differently, but knowing her and knowing me, I don't think it could have. We had good times, though. And I look back on those fondly. Whatever happened after will never change the truth of the past. Yes, once, a long time ago. She was a worldly woman and there was so much she knew and was willing to share with me. I would have done anything for her once. Are we fishing for compliments? Yes, I would do anything for you. You've been there for me when no one else has. You are a friend and so much more. In spite of what has happened and knowing what might happen soon, I am happy and life is good.
home. I can't wait out here for another day. So go home. The best thing you can do for your children is not trust these charlatans. Everyone remain calm. We will help as many as we can today, so long as we can do this in an orderly fashion. Oh, you're helping us, are you, Shem? Like Philendrian and my uncle Syrian, you helped them, didn't you? Help them never to be seen again. We've explained this to you before, girl. More whining will not persuade us to let you into the quarantine to carry plague back out to the alienage. Quit trying to get us all killed, Shiani. Some of us have still got things to live for. If this spell of theirs works, why are half the people they quarantine perfectly healthy? I don't believe it. Maker's breath. They said all the Grey Wardens died with the King. Everyone thought... Belendrian even held a funeral for you. Cousin, you have no idea the, the things that happened after your wedding. I'm babbling, aren't I? I'm so happy to see you. You're married? You didn't mention that. Why not? Did he get cold feet? Did his parents disapprove of the match? Oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have asked. So much has happened. It's good you're home. Uh, well, maybe we should go somewhere so you can be sitting down when I tell you this. The Tevinters quarantined your father yesterday. I told him not to go to the hospice. Not one elf they've taken in there has come out again. Who knows what's become of them? I knew you'd do something, cousin. Make her watch over you. Cousin, you're amazing. Which I shouldn't say to your face because it'll go to your head, but it's true. Are you sticking around for a while? You're staying for dinner, aren't you? You'd better. I'll weasel a bottle of wine from Alareth and we can catch up. I'll hold you to that, cousin. seem your talk is done. Great. This isn't a dream after all. What is it to be, then? Has a decision been reached? W wait. I, I want to ask about this child. The one you... want. Interesting. Honesty wouldn't have been my first choice. I just want to be sure that you're not going to use this... against Ferelden. That this bastard child of mine isn't going to show up some year. Of that, you have my word. <sighs> oh, why don't I feel any better about this? All right. Let's just get this over with. Let us go somewhere more private, Alistair. And believe me when I say you will not hate this quite so much as you believe.
You've managed to fight your way to the gates. We're doing better than I hoped. That will change quickly. Bloody nug runners are outnumbered three to one. What are we to do now, Riordan? You have a plan, I assume? The army will not last long, so we need to move quickly to reach the Archdemon. I suggest taking Alistair and no more than two others with you into the city. Anyone you don't bring with you can remain here to prevent more Darkspawn from entering Denerim on our tails. We're going to need to reach a high point in the city. I'm thinking the top of Fort Draken might work. The top of... you want to draw the dragon's attention? We have little choice, though I warn you that as soon as we engage the beast, it will call all its generals to help it. I can sense two generals in Denerim. You may wish to seek them out before going to Fort Draken. I am sure that if we did slay those generals, it would stop the darkspawn in the city from doing a lot of harm. It may also waste resources trying to find them. The decision is up to you. Neither of them are near Fort Draken currently. But there are too many Darkspawn here to tell you more. There are already several units of our allies within the city by now. They may be able to come to your assistance if you call them, but their strength will be limited. Now, who do you wish to take with you into the city? Fair enough. Anyone else will need to remain here and assist in keeping more Darkspawn from coming in the gates behind us. Who will lead them? I'd rather be going after the Archdemon. But all right. Good. That should be sufficient. Nothing you have done has prepared you for what you face now. May the Maker watch over you. Well, this is it, Warden. When from the blood of battle the stone is fed, let the heroes prevail and the blighters lie dead. <laughs> As one of the blighters, I sodding salute you. Let's show them our hearts, and then show them theirs. Are you ready? We have reached the battlefield at last. I have done nothing. You have carried us this far. Do not doubt that. So now we head into the city together to face the Archdemon, hmm? Good. I was nearly afraid you were about to march inside without me. We cannot have that. Let us go and teach this dragon a lesson, yes? It should have stayed in whatever hole it crawled out of. So we head into the city together. As it should be. Once this is done, no matter how it turns out, I will be gone. You are aware of this, yes? You are most welcome. It is, I think, the very least I could offer you. <sighs> Allow me to say only one thing before we go. I knew nothing of friendship before we met. And I will always consider you such. Live well, my friend. Live gloriously. Now, let us see this finally done. The Archdemon awaits. So I'm not going with you, I see. Any particular reason? And here I thought you'd want me at your side, just in case. As your comrade. Even so, I won't argue with you about it. I'll do my best out here. Be careful in there, will you? You said you'd help me be king, and I'm not letting you off if you go dying or something. Just remember, that ritual isn't going to help if you get your head squashed first. Go kick its ass. So this is it? This is the end? We've come so far. It's strange knowing that all our fates will be decided in a matter of hours. We stand on the precipice before the greatest battle of our age. I wonder if the heroes of old ever felt like this. I am not afraid. We go to fight for a good cause, and there is nowhere else I would rather be. You are my dearest friend and my love. You lit my path through darkness, and I will stand with you to whatever end. This day, we will forge a legend of our own. Another down!
So here we are. The conquering heroine has won the day, and now she takes her bow and exits the stage. A fine ending. <laughs> yes. Yes, she most certainly does. You know, I can't help now but think of my vision. The Maker sent me to help you, and look what you did. It's a miracle. It truly really is. So, if I heard right, you'll be staying here in Denerim. As it so happens, my plan is to do exactly the same thing. I'm thinking that spending some time in one place might be a nice change of pace. At any rate, I should let you get back to your celebration before someone drags you away. I look forward to seeing you again afterwards. <laughs> <laughs>